Welcome back students, Mr. McCoy here. Lesson 14 doesn't have any notes attached to it, but don't worry, we'll still be learning some stuff. I want to focus in this lesson on the art of pseudocoding. In this lesson you do uh, lab 14, which is creating your full blackjack game, and it's a more complicated program. There's a lot of room for mistakes, and it's an excellent opportunity for us to focus on how to plan before we code. Now before we dig into our pseudocode, let's make sure we understand what this program is supposed to do. Our version of blackjack is going to differ a little bit from a traditional blackjack. We're going to simplify the rules. We're going to start off with saying that uh, aces are always going to be considered 11s. In real blackjack they could be either a 1 or an 11, but we'll always call them 11. Keep in mind that all face cards have a value of 10, and numbered cards are the same as their number amount. So if you're given a 4, then that's uh, that adds 4 onto your hand total. If you're given a king, that would add 10 onto your hand total. If you're given an ace, that would add 11 onto your hand total. And the goal of blackjack is to get as close as you can to 21 without going over. Now we're going to fake our cards a little bit. Rather than actually having cards, we're just going to grab random numbers. Randomly grab a number between 2, our lowest possible card, and 11, our highest possible card. I know that's not the way blackjack would usually work because getting a 10 would be more likely than any other number because of the 10s, jack, queens, and kings, but uh, we're just going to simplify for now, and you can expand on it later if you'd like. Now this is going to be a game where you, the player, will play against the computer, so we also need to build in some AI so that the dealer can play. And there's some rules attached to the dealer. Uh, the dealer has to hit or take additional cards if the dealer's total is 14 or less, and the dealer uh, is required to stay if their total is 15 or more. Now you, as the player, you have the option to hit or stand whenever you'd like. After both you and the dealer have had an opportunity to take a turn, then you compare the two scores to see who won, just like you did in Simple Blackjack a few labs ago. In the Word document, there's code provided to you that'll help you in getting a random number uh, between 2 and 11. This is what that code looks like. And there's also opportunities for improving your, uh, your game by adding betting systems or more accurately simulating real cards so that you couldn't possibly draw five twos. In our game that is possible because a random two could come up five times in a row. We're not going to do anything special to prevent that at this time. So I've already coded a solution to this and I want to go ahead and run my program just so that you can see a good example of what it should look like. Alright, run blackjack. It greets you, we'll hook him to you to the casino, and then both players are dealt some cards. I'm dealt an 8, and then I'm dealt a 10, and the dealer is also dealt two cards, but we can't see them. So my hand total currently is 18 because of the 8 plus 10. Now I don't need to keep track of this 8 and the 10, just the fact that I randomly got an 8 and then I randomly got a 10. We added them together, got our 18, and now who cares about that? This is the important thing. 18 is our hand total. Then we get uh, an option. Would you like to hit or stand? Well, 18 is pretty close to 21. Uh, if I was to hit, there's a very good chance I would go over 21, so I'm going to stand. So type 2. Dealer shows a 7, so the dealer must have had like a 4 and a 3 or a 5 and a 2 or something like that, but their two cards totaled up to a 7. So because that's 14 or less, the dealer is required to draw. The dealer drew a 3, so now the dealer's total is 10. Dealer is still required to draw. Dealer drew a 5, now the dealer's total is 15. And at 15, the dealer is required to stand. And then we get a results. Results, my hand total is 18, dealer had 15, player wins. Nice. All right, let's play again. Yes. I'm dealt a 10, and I'm dealt an 8. Hey, just like before. Uh, dealer has two cards, can't see them. My hand total is 18, I'll stand again. Dealer shows a 10, dealer draws a 4, they have 14, and then they drew a 6 taking them up to 20. Now they're required to stand, so the hand total, I had 18, they had 20, dealer wins. Let's try again. 
I'm dealt a 3 and then I'm dealt an 11. Alright, so my hand total is 14. Uh, I'm going to try hitting this time. I'm dealt a 2. My new hand total is 16. I'll hit again. I know that's probably a bad strategy, but let's give it a try. I'm dealt a 9, so now my hand total is 25. Uh, I coded this so that if you bust, you don't get the option to hit again. But I suppose it, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong if you allowed the player the option to continue to get more cards after 25. But uh, there's no reason to. They've pretty much lost. The dealer had an 8. Uh, or the dealer showed an 8. That was uh, the total of their first two cards. The dealer draws a 10, uh, putting the dealer at 18, which means the dealer will stand on 18. That's a requirement. So the results, my hand total is a 25, and the dealer's hand total is an 18. Player busted, dealer wins. If you like to play again, I will say no. And it thanks me for coming to the casino. So that's our goal, write a program that functions like that. Obviously, there's a lot of parts to this, a lot of things we need to consider, and if we just open up our Java file and just start typing away, there's a good chance we're going to spend a lot of time working on something that doesn't work. And we'll be trying to just fix holes in our program, but a smarter way to approach it is to plan all this out. Let's think about the steps that we need to take in order to get this result. You have this document over here. It's just a text file, but it's an excellent place to do some pseudocoding. Let me open it up. So it's called readme.txt and it's just a place where I can put some notes and that's a good place for me to write my pseudocode. So what is pseudocode? Pseudocode is fake code or false code or basically it's just English language version of code. What I like to do with pseudocode is start with a general idea and then to get more specific as you go until finally you're getting closer and closer to looking like real code. So what is the general idea? Play blackjack. Okay, is that pseudocode? No, it's pretty far from pseudocode. It's just our main heading, main topic. But what are the steps in playing blackjack? Let's get more specific. More specifically, we need to deal cards and then player takes a turn and then dealer takes a turn and then we find out who won. Find out who won. Okay. And we would probably want this entire process to occur within a loop. Right? So we can play over and over again. So I'm just going to put loop and then indent this entire thing so that we can see that's what's what that's what's looping. Loop while player still wants to play. Alright, so is this pseudocode? Well, it's getting closer. It's looking more like code, but uh, still a lot of these are big ideas that can be uh, clarified a little more. So we have a loop running, and every time we run we're simulating a hand. We get the cards, player takes a turn, dealer takes a turn, we find out who won. That's the process. If you look through we start here, dealt cards, player gets to take a turn, dealer gets to take a turn, we find out who won. And then we just repeat that over and over again. But we can be more specific with this. Deal cards, what does that look like? It's usually a good idea to keep in the back of your mind what variables you might need. So let's just say we have a variable for player total. Then I need to get random number 2 to 11 and add that onto player total. And I should probably display to screen because we had that message out here, you are dealt an 8. So I'm going to get a random number, display it to the screen, and add that onto my player total and I want to do that again. Eh, two times doesn't necessarily mean that I should have a loop. I could just repeat that. We get a second random number, display it to the screen, and add that on the player total. So now I have my two cards and maybe we should do the same thing for the dealer also. Maybe we need a variable for dealer total 
and take this, throw it in there, variable for dealer total, get a random number 2 to 11, but we don't display it to the screen. The dealer's card is secret. Add that on to dealer total, get another random number 2 to 11, display that to the screen. No, we don't need to display it. Add that on to dealer total. Okay, so those are the steps that are required to deal the cards. So now we've kind of defined this section of code, the deal card section. So what, how would we define this player takes a turn part? Let's write some pseudocode below that to kind of define the steps for a player taking a turn. Well, every time the player is about to take a turn, it shows their total and then asks them what they want to do. So let's start with that. Display current player total. Prompt do you want to hit or stand? Now we're going to have a fork in our pathway because we might have if they hit then what are we going to do? So I need to indent here. If they decide to hit, then we need to do some stuff. If they decided to hit, then we should get another random number between 2 and 11, display it to the screen, and add that to the total. Okay, so I can just borrow this, put it down there. If they hit, we should do these two things. And then after they've gotten a card, then they get the option to, I mean, this entire thing is going to occur again, right? So this is going to keep going until they decide they want to stand. So this should all be inside of a loop. Let me push all this in one more indention and add some code right here. When the player takes a turn, then we've entered into a new loop. Loop. And we're going to loop all of this stuff while... And how long are we going to run this loop? We're going to keep running this loop as long as they're saying hit while player requests hit and you could go one step further like I did in mine and say and the player total is less than or equal to 21. If they've gone over 21 there's really no reason to allow them to keep getting new cards. Alright so does that cover the entire player turn? Yeah, I think that might cover it. Okay, so that is our player turn. Now we need to figure out this dealer turn. So you can see that the dealer turn is going to probably look a whole lot like the player turn, except that we don't have to ask questions. The dealer just works on their own. Let's figure out how to code dealer takes a turn. Look over here. So this represents the dealer's turn. The first thing that we see is that the we see the dealer's total. So let's add code for that. Display dealer total. Because keep in mind, up to this point, it's all been hidden from us. We never displayed the dealer's information to the screen. Display dealer total. And if the dealer had 14 or less, then the dealer is required to get a new card. So if dealer total is less than or equal to 14, then we know we need to hit. So what does hitting require? It's something like this. We get a random number from 2 to 11, and this time we can display it to the screen. And then we add that on to the dealer total. And then what happens? We would want to loop this. We would want to display the dealer total again. And then if the dealer total is still less than or equal to 14, we get another card. And then we display it. So this is going to be another loop. Let me indent all of this one more time and add in that we are now in a loop. And I want this loop to run while what conditions? While at what point does the dealer stop wanting additional cards? Well, we're going to keep running this loop while dealer total is less than or equal to 14. As soon as it becomes greater than that, then we're going to exit our loop. And that would be the end of the dealer's turn. So now we've, uh, we've written out all the code for the deal cards portion, player takes a turn, and the dealer takes a turn portion. Now the only thing left is find out who won. 
Now that's code that you should have already written whenever you did simple blackjack in a previous lab. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on that, because you've probably already done it, but finding out who won, I would say, what are all the possible outcomes? And I can think of a few. We could say that uh, if they both bust, that would be one outcome. Or you could have only player busts. So if the player busted and the computer didn't, then the computer wins. Or another possibility, only the computer busts, in which case the player wins. Now if nobody busts, well then it gets a little trickier because now we need to see is there a tie? But if there's not a tie then it's highest hand wins. So this is kind of a general blueprint for hitting all the possible scenarios. So then we've got uh, this original loop. Loop this while the player still wants to play. So somewhere down here after all that stuff has happened we need to uh, prompt do you want to play again? And uh, and if they do, then this entire process loops back up. So this is your pseudocode. Now pseudocoding is going to be a requirement for this lab. It's going to be a portion of your grade. And it really defeats the purpose of your pseudocode if you just sit there and type up my pseudocode without thinking. So what I'd really like you to do, now that we've gone through this process together, is pause this video, minimize it, set it aside, open up your own pseudocode and see if you can do it on your own. Come up with your own plan and then try to code it out. If you get stuck anywhere along the way, you can revisit this video and see, well, how did Mr. McCoy suggest that we approach that? But really, try to do this on your own. And feel free to make it even fancier than this. Try to make it more similar to real blackjack, then that's awesome. So good luck, and I hope you have fun. Enjoying my class? Smash that like button! Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.